Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness when we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we had hid as it were our faith from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own ways, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 through 6. Let him hard pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you now in the most humblest way we know how. God. First of all, we just praise and thank you and magnify your holy name for indeed your word to be praised. Oh God, we just praise and thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do. And Lord, we just pray right now that uh, you create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us, that as we come before you, O oh God, that you'll, you'll hear our, our prayers. And, O oh God, we, we just don't want to just come to you, just action, but just, just praise it and thank you for but be just being so good and so kind for all you've done. So if you just uh, don't do anything else, O oh God, you've just, you just, you just flourished your abundance already to us. And Father, we just pray for our sick and shut in, our bereaved. Uh, Father, we just uh, pray for this under, our pastor, our under shepherd of this, under shepherd of the flock, this part of your moral vineyard, and pray for his family, O oh God, that you'll continue to uh, bless and keep and strengthen him, O oh God, as he continue to lead and guide us down this um, uh, path of uh, righteousness, O oh God. And give us the spirit, O oh God, that as he continues to uh, follow you, O oh Father, uh, that we will continue to uh, follow him and, and, and hold him up, O oh God. Father, we just pray for the, uh, the, the sick and those that, that, that don't even believe. Because, God, there's a, there's a sickness in this land that God is, is continuing to ravish this land. And, God, your word, you've already said that if we'll turn from our wicked ways, you'll heal this land. But God, we know that uh, you've already, you've already provided uh, many, many answers for us if we would just uh, turn from our wicked ways. And we know that many still don't believe, but God, we know that you are a God of righteousness. And if we don't believe, there's a penalty for that. And it, it, it is up to us. We, we are free moral agents, and, and, and we just have to, we have to come to the realization that um, if we don't turn from our wicked ways, there's destruction ahead of us. And so um, uh, it's before our very eyes, Lord, that, that many are, uh, are dying because of unbelief. Uh, and, and, and whether or not it's unbelief because they just don't believe in a righteous God, but there's there's pestilence in our land, and uh, you've enabled um, man to come up with a vaccination, and yet there's plenty of rejections even to that. So, Lord, we just pray for the unbelief, and we just pray that you won't let us grow weary and well-doing, oh God, because we know that you haven't given up on humanity, because every breath that we take, oh God, that gives us yet another opportunity to continue to tell 
the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh God, you are, you are God of many chances, many chances. And Lord, we just continue to praise you. We, we, we love your will, we love your way, oh God. Um, your word tells us uh, that to, con uh, to trust in you and in all our ways, acknowledging you promise to continue to, do, to direct our paths. And, and Lord, we want you to continue to direct our paths. We don't want to give up. Um, uh, you, you're just too good and too kind. You, you, you know everything before it even happens. And so, Lord, we just, we just, we just love you. We, we, we thank you for not giving up on us. And Lord, we just, just pray that you won't give up on us. Lord, we just praise and we thank you. For it's in Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen.
your Connected in Christ announcements for the week. Thank you. Arriving at the door, you were met by the St. Stephen's Nurse Ministry. Entering the sanctuary, you were greeted and guided by the St. Stephen's Usher Ministry. In the pulpit, a St. Stephen's Associate Minister assisted our pastor. Assessing any area of the facility, you could see St. Stephen's deacons ministering from the entrance to serving as honor guards for our departed brother. Thank you, St. Stephen's, for your biblical model of love during the homegoing celebration of Deacon Peter Stitt at Second Baptist Church. Your efforts ensured the safety and comfort of all in attendance. The family and others are truly grateful, and so am I, Pastor Biggs. Congratulations, graduate. Congratulations, Sister Adria Elaine Boxley, on successfully earning your master's degree in business administration. Both heaven and earth are smiling with you. Ministries in Action. Saturday at 12 noon, the ministers, deacon, trustee, wives, and widows will meet via dial-in. A little while longer. As we continue in worshiping and serving in the current manner for a little while longer, we are doing our best to meet the spiritual needs of our church family. Prayers and meetings are just a phone call, text, email, or appointment input away. Additionally, we want to strengthen the live fellowship after worship by continuing the worship atmosphere by focusing on things that occurred during worship or sharing prayer requests. After addressing the spiritual things, those wishing to chat and enjoy each other may remain online and have some fun together. Sunday School Heads Up. We have not received our ordered materials from the company producing our Sunday School lessons. As a result, we may have to use backup materials for a few weeks. They will be the same lessons structured a little differently. The good news, we won't miss a meal of our word diet. To God be the glory. Deacon Peter Stitt's program. Because of printing limitations, the office included four pages of Deacon Stitt's homegoing program in the weekly mail out. The entire 12 pages are included in the digital version for your viewing and a keepsake. Also, the service is available for viewing on the St. Stephen's SATX YouTube channel. Spiritual PPE. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Romans 8, 28 through 30, New King James Version. These have been your announcements for the week. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. Sharon knew that if she didn't hurry, she would be late for the funeral at the church this morning. As the lead usher, it was her responsibility to make sure the other ushers were in place, hand out funeral programs, and seat guests. Her hands were shaking as she combed out her hair. Fred, the 24-year-old son of one of the church's longtime members, had been killed in a car wreck on Saturday night. The two passengers in Fred's car were still hospitalized, both in critical condition. Fred had been thrown from the car and died at the scene. Fred came from a large family and had been a popular young man in high school and at the local community college. 
Although Fred's parents were faithful members, she had only seen Fred in church on Mother's Day. She had run into him several times outside of the church and had even invited him to come and visit more often. He had always laughed and teased that he was too young for that church stuff. Sharon had ushered at enough funerals to know that there would be a lot of crying. That part she didn't mind. It was the screaming and having to restrain guests from throwing themselves into the casket that bothered her. While Sharon understood that grief was natural, the funerals of young people were always chaotic. She wondered what Pastor would say during the eulogy. He couldn't possibly have known Fred that well. How, she wondered, would he comfort Fred's family and friends? How do you offer comfort in the face of death? How does knowing Christ change how we understand death?
Father, we come to you right now, dear God, just to say thank you. We want to thank you for the many blessings that we have. Thank you for the rising of the sun. Thank you for the sleep and the roofs that covered our heads last night. Father God, we say thank you even though in today's world there seems to be so many things to be afraid of. There's wars. There's natural disasters. People are dying from pandemics. And people are running to and fro as if not knowing what to do. Well, Father God, we pray today and we suggest to them that they all turn to you. But you are the answer. But Father God, we just lift everything up to you. We lift the people of our congregation. We lift our church, our families, our homes. We lift them all up to you, dear God, and we submit ourselves to you. And we just ask that you come down with your spirit. And you touch this world. You just give us a touch, Father God. A touch that everything will be all right because it's only you that can solve the problems of the world today. And so we need to turn to you when we turn to you now, dear God, and we call out, Father, help us. Help us, your people, your children. We call on you, dear God, to come see about us. Father God, we got some right now that are bereaved for the loss of a loved one. We have those who are concerned about illnesses and situations and procedures that are due for hospitals and doctors. And Father God, we just ask you right now to touch each one, to comfort them, to give them the security and the peace of knowing that you have them, that all they have to do is call on you and everything will be all right. Father God, things may not always be as we want them to be, but we thank you for them being as good as they are. For it is your will that everything is done. And we know in the end, Father God, that you love us and that you will take care of us and that you will protect us. So we call on you, dear God. Just come see about your people. Father God, we just thank you for all things past and present. We just ask you to help us to walk and to be pleasing and, and desirable to you for the things that we do and the way that we carry ourselves and the way that we live our lives, Father God, the way that we care about each other, the way that we help each other. So, Father God, just help us to be the people that we ought to be, the people that you want us to be. We ask you to touch this, this old world, Father God. Touch it and let your will be done. We ask you to bless our pastor. We ask you to bless all the ministers, the deacons, and each and every member of the congregation, Father. We just ask you to watch over us, to keep us, to keep us wrapped in your love and your care. And we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
which was my first sermon which was titled Relationship Before Fellowship. This has always been my favorite chapter of scripture and it's only a book, a chapter in the book of Hebrews that is only 14 verses long. And in this book, we get a, a view and an ear to what God did in heaven. 
before the earth was even populated by man. This was even before Lucifer had been cast out of heaven and his angels. I begin to read. It says, God, who in sundry times and divers manners, Hebrews 1 and 1, spoke in the, in the times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3 says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, that is powerful. Now, the first three verses of this chapter, first of all, this is, uh, chapter is to the people of Hebrew, the Hebrew people, Jewish people. They had, that was a, and, 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 and it is given to us known as a unknown writer that has wrote this book. And that is the power of God because when God do great things, he don't need us to take credit for it. We don't have to have our name plastered over everything. So they say it's an unknown writer, but some of us know and feel like we know who it is. But we won't split hairs over that. Now, these first three verses are summary verses. What do I mean by summary verses? They sum up what God did when he spoke to his people in the beginning, how he spoke to his people through the prophets, and then it also brings us all the way down to salvation. And it points to, also, speaking of how Jesus is the brightness of his glory. The express image of his personage, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. So those are summary verses. They're summing up everything in a nutshell. But he doesn't stop just to, he doesn't, he doesn't stop and just stop right there. Then he goes into further detail. Well, why is he going into further detail? For one thing, these are things that had not been made known unto the churches or to man yet in full detail where now you can follow an order. Previously, we, these things were hidden from man. As in Paul says, in the, the Apostle Paul says in Colossians 3 and 9, he says, it is a hidden mystery in God to make all men see the fellowship of the mystery that all things, not some things, but all things were made by Jesus Christ. Well, sometimes we, that might throw us for a loop a little bit because we've been taught that God made the heavens and the earth and that God made it all. Well, that's why I love this chapter because he doesn't allow us to be ignorant of anything. He wants us to know in detail. Why? Because he don't want us to go out among people that know his word for themselves or that know more about this word and they may even be using it for the wrong reason. He wants us to go out and be able to 
know what we're talking about. So, let's keep reading. He says, being made so much better than the angels. See, there was a dispute as to whether Jesus was an angel. Some even state that today, that Jesus was Lucifer's brother. He was his angel. No, he was not an angel at any time. Never did. Okay, now this says that he was made. But there's, that is not the way it goes. That the only way we can, we tend to relate to things is that if they're made. But if we keep on reading, we're going to find out how Christ was manifested. Amen. So it says, he was made so much better than the angels. But actually he was begotten. He wasn't made. He came from his father. So, so much better than the angels. As he had by inheritance obtained a more, ex a more excellent name than they. Wow. How much more excellent name can he inherit? Amen. But I, we're going to get to that in just a minute. Amen. For unto which, the writer gets into this. And he says, for to which of the angels said he at any time? Now, this is a conversation he had in heaven. Amen. Now, I want to get to heaven for a minute before we go into that. In the beginning, before there was anything made, before there was anything at all, there was a father the Word, and they were all one inside of him. Amen. And we don't know how long that was. Could be millions of years or anything. But in biblical speak, we speak of dispensational periods. That's just a hundred dollar word that means in the fullness of time. So, after the Father and the Word had been one, the Father begot his Son, his Word. And we'll see what the Father calls his Word. Amen. And by him begotting him, that's where he gets to be the express image of the invisible God. Amen. And that's what I love about this because now I am getting to know where my father is. Where that first relationship I have to keep in mind and attack at. I have to keep that in mind. That's why that first sermon that I preached was so important to me. That I got to know and my thoughts were where did good and evil come from? When I searched to know where good and evil come from, I couldn't find it in Genesis. I couldn't find it first mentioned in Genesis. Amen. Genesis was where Moses started writing. So Christ was before Moses. Amen. So God allows us to hear and see what took place. So I'd often heard about how the angels had fallen. So the angels were before Genesis. Amen. They had a habitation in heaven. And how Lucifer sin caused him to fall. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself now. But isn't that good news to you? To where you don't have to go running around the Bible to try to put it all together. It's all right here. Amen. 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 And, and, and so, here we go. He says, he had inherited a name more excellent than they. Amen. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, You are my son. This day have I what begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. 
That's good news because that's telling us something that took place between the Father and the Son before anything was made. Amen. Any stars was in the sky, any, any angels created, that was just the Father begotten the Son. Now, I don't see in any place in the scripture where Christ, where the, where, where the Son of God went back inside and became his heavenly Father again. All they became one. No, he's the begotten. Amen. And that's, that is so powerful. Because now you see that God was moving forward. And he didn't, he didn't, he, he wasn't moving forward because he belonged. See, where God the Father and the Son were, there was no need for any light because they were light. His radiance and his glory shined forth. Nothing evil, nothing but his glory. And his son, so when he begot his son, there they are, standing there looking at each other. But Jesus knew that he had planned. He had already told Jesus everything he wanted done. Where, he, where to put every star in the sky? Where to put all the principalities and power? Where to put the thrones and everything? How to build everything? He told him while they were one in the same body. After that time of fellowship, we don't know how long that was. Jesus began to get busy. Amen. Doing everything according to his father's plan. The Bible tells us he did it for, by him and for his pleasure. Amen. Because that is the image of the kingdom of heaven. For the son to do what pleases the father. Amen. And he set up the same thing on earth. Amen. For the, it says, children, honor your mother and your father so that your days shall be long upon this earth. There's nothing more rewarding to a son or daughter to where you honor your mother and your father and you're doing what pleases them. There's nothing more rewarding for a wife or a husband to where they're doing what is pleasing their father. Isn't it amazing that God set up the family household. When he created man, he created them in his image and his likeness. And when you see godly households operating like the kingdom of heaven, where the, where the husband and the wife are functioning in his order, you can't go around them and go to get one to do something outside of character for you because they operate in the image of the kingdom of heaven. So as it is in heaven, you can't go around the Father and get to Jesus. You can't even get to the Father without getting to Jesus. That's why his name is so important. Now, we, we read from an English Bible. Amen. Jesus' name, if it, back in the Hebrew language, was Yeshua Amashiach. And that just means the anointed one. Amen. And some songs carry it even further to let you know that he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. The conquering king. Amen. In, in, in Spanish, it might be Jesus. Jesus Christos. So whatever it means in your language, that's, we're talking about the same person. Is he the one that created all things? Is he the one that God called his only begotten son before the foundation of the world? Well, we're going to see right here. So, it says, For to which of the angels said in verse 5, it says, For which of the angels did say, At any time, you are my son. This day have I begotten you. So, forget about him being an angel. He's not an angel. Angels have limited power and understanding. Angels have limited authority. Christ 
is unlimited because he has all power that was given unto him for, by his father. Amen. So, I will be to him what a father, and he shall be to me a son. Boy, there's nothing like a father and a son or a daughter and a father relationship. Amen. And when it's untampered with, amen, when you have those relationships, amen, but sometimes it takes you some time to get there because of this sinful world that's contaminated so many things. Sometimes the father and sons are at odds. But once they get it together, amen, Sometimes the son has to go out there and get it, go to the school a hard knocks for a minute. Or the daughter being at odds. Amen. But when they get it together and they realize that I'm separated from my father, when I sit up there and I hand in hand, amen. Amen. See, Jesus had all power and authority, everything under his hand. Amen. Amen. The beauty of Jesus, the beauty of Christ, is that by him having all of that power and authority, he never once did anything but what pleased his Father. Are they not all ministering spirits sent to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Who are the heirs of salvation? See, all of this foretold, heirs of salvation, you, me, because God knew that man was going to mess it up. He knew it, but he already had passed salvation for all of us, amen. But to heed that avenue, the Bible says that only way that you can come unto the Lord, unto the Son, unless the Father draw you, is he drawing you today, Amen. When he's drawing you, you have a heart. Your heart, there's something going on. Amen. And then there's something you want to get right. You want to do for him. You want to change your ways. You feel differently. You think differently. You look at your hands and they look new. Amen. You be thankful for what he gave you. New eyes, new walk, new talk. You thank him. Now you can look back at heaven. Right there in the first chapter of Hebrews. And see where he created it in the image of the invisible God. And not only that, Jesus said in the fullness of time, after Adam sinned, after all the animals had been slain, after everything had came to pass, he said in Hebrews the second. In the in the in the in the in the in the pleasure of bull and lamb, you have no pleasure in. But lo, it is written to me in the volume of this book, to do your will, oh God. I'll go. For I say, who will I sin? Who else can you sin but me? Amen. So, get to know Jesus for yourself. You can. It's right here. Amen. There's no excuse. He said, there's no excuse. No man to say they don't know him. Because his goodness and his mercy always let him know that he's good. Everything good comes from above. The devil not going to give you nothing that's good. You think it's good. But in the due time, you ain't going to have no happiness behind it. There's no happiness in sin. You think it is. It's pleasurable for a season. But when you get to know Jesus for yourself, and you think about what he did for you, how he lifted you up, turned you around, kept on pulling you out of those stairs of the devil's mouth over and over and over again. I was in a church, and I heard that song for the first time. You got to know Jesus, know the Lord for yourself. If you know Jesus, you don't need nobody else. Walk right. Talk right, live right, pray right. You got to know Jesus 
Know the Lord for yourself. There's one last verse I'm going to give you. He said, you go to church on Sunday. You praise the devil on Monday. God don't need a wicked Christian. You can't make it to heaven that way. God needs to make you humble. He needs to pure it on. You got to know Jesus. Know the Lord for yourself. Amen. So if you're trying, you get out on your knees today. You don't have to wait for nobody else. And ask him and say, Jesus, I want to walk with you. I want Jesus to walk with me. I'm not doing the things that I, I don't want to do what I'm doing no more. I want to be in heaven with you. And your way is the right way. Holy and right. I need help. And he'll help you. Get to know. He's waiting. Open up.